Welcome back to a rainy day at the Hoosier Garage. And what we're going to be working on today is hopefully some final sheet metal work on the 72 Dodge B200 Tradesman Van. You're watching the most unique automotive channel on YouTube, the Hoosier Garage. You like that? You like how we had the lights on there at the beginning? Kind of draws you in. So what we got, these are the original doors for the very, very back cargo doors for the 72. And we did the muriatic acid stripping concept months and months and months ago. And I noticed it seemed like they was a little thin down here in the lower section where you get all the dirt and debris collected. So I just kind of sat on it and let them play out, you know, let the environment kind of do their thing. And sure enough, you saw some rust forming. And this one, I went ahead and cut it right off. Basically just shaved the edge with a, a grinder, four and a half inch grinder, all the way around until this edge pretty much just popped loose. They had a couple spot welds on there, but you know, nothing, nothing crazy. And then the lip that wrapped around there, uh, you had to kind of cut some of those welds so you can peel that off. But here's what we got on the, uh, this would be the passenger door. Yeah. We've got a hole here and that kind of developed. And so we're pretty thin down here. We got a lot of, uh, we got pin holes going on there. So we know it's thin there. And I had done a repair there, but I wasn't sure about it. So I just let it set and decided these are gonna need lower sections. Now there was a provider out there of sheet metal and it wasn't just mill supply. Mill supply gives you a lot of the rocker panels, the belly panels, the quarter panels, uh, you know, a myriad of other little parts for these vans. Uh, but another company had this lower section for these doors, uh, the rears and then the sides are similar, but the sides, uh, they extend down deeper. And they come up from about here and all the way down. Well, I ordered them and it was only like $25 a piece. But after about three weeks of being on order, they notified me, said, sorry, we don't have this, we can't do this panel anymore. I was like, all right, well, just send me my money back. And they did, they was good about that, whoever that was, it's been a while. So I've just let it sit even longer. Well, now we're getting down to wanting to paint this thing. It needs a little bit of, you know, attention on certain areas, but this is still metal that needs to be welded in or, or glued in or something. So. Our friend Rob from next door, he does a lot of air conditioning, heavy duty air conditioning uh, uh, contracts with a lot of companies, you know, you know, retail stores and stuff. So he has this break that he loaned me and I think it'll work for what we're wanting to do here because we need to make this, this bend. And if you see the profile, actually it's a little bit more pure from there, it kind of comes up on a, on a, a curve and it goes fairly flat there. And that'll give you the slight edge here, and then the curve is kind of where it meets the rest of the door. I haven't cut this one yet, so I'll show you uh, up close what it really needs to look like and what we need to do next. So here's the one we cut, and this is just the inner door shell. We treated it with phosphoric acid on this one because it was more of a, a heavy surface rust, so it's turned a lot of it black. We'll clean this up before we go put the other one on. But with that one gone, the piece I was holding, this one still needs cut off. And you can see the damage over time that's developed here. Not as bad, uh, but it's still very, very thin down through there, okay? I drew a line here so you can see the profile of it a little bit easier. And so we really need to make this bend. We need to make a bend to where it can wrap around the back and then you hammer and dolly it the rest of the way, all the way down through there. And up here, uh, not real concerned about that, we do need to give it enough length, for instance, on this piece, because I'm probably gonna do a flange weld and we'll use our flanger to put a crimp in it so that it'll either fit underneath this or uh, one way or the other. We'll probably do it on the piece we cut so it can fit in under here and uh, it'll blend in. Then we'll have to body work the rest of it, okay? And you could do it either way. If you have a really good welder that doesn't like to warp, keeps the heat down, you can do a direct weld against that and you should be good okay so we're gonna have to get this bend right here we're gonna have to get enough length on it 
and I have this piece. The only thing I got right now, it came from the roof of that duster that we parted out a year ago. So we definitely have the length. We can do several pieces here. And hopefully if we mess one of them up, we can make another one, so. Okay, so hopefully you noticed I had to turn the piece over because I want to use this as the uh, the outward portion that you see when it's on the door. So I flipped it over to the back side and achieved our first bend. That might need a little tweaking, but I got, got generally the, the right pitch to it. But the next thing I wanted to do and was to get that gradual soft curve radius in the metal. So I was kind of just sticking it in there, not any measurements on it, just eyeballing it and then clamping it down. And you, I guess you can either go all the way or I was, this is kind of like three quarters of the way here. You go all the way down if you want. Like that. And then just pick up on it gradually. Okay. So when I say gradual, I mean literally. Just enough to give you resistance. A bit of that, and back off. And you can either move it in, or just want to say move it in some. Brace it a little bit. Clamp it down. Make sure it's all good. It's holding its depth just right. And do it again. Same, same amount of pressure. Ideally, you'd want this thing bolted down with a piece that's pretty much getting this large and this thick. But uh, you can kind of make do with it and give it a little bit there. A little bit there. Back it off and just survey what it looks like. And it's got a nice start to it, you know? Um, let's see the bottom of it get it up here right and show you. Here's the curve piece here. So it ain't bad. We could probably take it out here towards the edge and, and get that more of a kick on it. So I'll let it set kind of shallow. And I'm using a mark, the heavy mark that we bent and laying it right against this on both ends. Make sure it stays that way. So that's good. And there's less material, so your bend on it is gonna be more extreme. Okay, so say be easy on it, although we do need to go fairly flat with it. Like so if you're not sure, back off and see what you just did. So looks like it's doing something. The paint on it's kind of messing with you visual but it'll come off eventually so it still needs a little bit more of that radius on it too. All right, so this first couple of bins, I decided to pull it out and lay it over here so you can see the light hit the different angles, okay? This is our curve. It's a real 
gradual and then we kind of put a flat lip up there so it has a, like a bowl shape to it um, a lot of this that you're seeing it looks sharper here than it does there is because of the paint has actually cracked the old whatever this was here um, the duster that this came from was originally black and then it was resprayed sprayed blue so that's nothing the factory had there but just a little note okay so this looks pretty good um, one thing i will need to do and we're going to use this one as an example we need to get some measurements from the apex or the peak of the bend right here down to where it starts to wrap under okay and then add that length to it which it looks like it's about eh, three eighths of an inch and then you would add another probably sixteenth of it to get to compensate for the bend around okay so you're looking at about a half an inch beyond this right here same thing right here so you come out this way come out this way so you add an inch and then add a full half inch underneath this so in theory we have this this is going to be a finish even though it looks rough we'll trim it up but you'll come off of here measure it whatever that is to the bottom edge you'll add that extra half inch and then add a full inch here to compensate for one end to the other and then you should be able to cut it out you can make a couple bends so you can establish a nice sharp bend here and then allow you to hammer and dolly it around okay so starting again from the apex of our bend here our primary bend i want to come out just a hair under two inches okay I'll put that there and i'm going to stretch that here so we get a little bit more accurate there and we'll do it in a few places just find the very peak of the, the bend there and you'll have a bend like this on a lot of different this isn't very specific the little curve kind of is but you don't have to worry about that if you're not working on one of these bands and have to duplicate that part so that's where the bottom of it visually will be now we have to add the extra that wraps around the little lip Okay, and like I said, it come out to about three eighths of an inch if you measure it straight off the backside. But you have to compensate for the little wrap around at the very, very bottom, that little edge, the little rounded edge. So you're going to give it just a little bit extra on that. So I could just say, if you want to keep it simple, just make it a half an inch. Yeah, let's just do five eighths just to be be thrifty there. Give ourselves a lot of room for error. So we have our our up and down, our vertical, we'll have to get our width on this. And let me grab that real quick. It comes to 25 and a quarter. And like I said earlier, we wanna add a whole inch. That'll give you enough wrap around on both ends. A half inch either way. So I'm gonna use this edge. It's a nice straight edge, at least to about here. So we're in the clear. So I'm gonna mark my 25 and a quarter right there. I'll go ahead and do it up here so we can get a square cut on it. Put a straight edge on it. And remember, add your extra inch or a little over. In this case, I'm just gonna do an inch. So it should total come to 26 and a quarter. And we'll make that mark much more prevalent there. So we need this section up here from about here here all right it gives us a lot of room to make our other piece both of these bottom pieces are identical obviously upper portion of the door it starts to change with where the holes for the door handle is but technically the door skins are the same until they start punching holes in them So here's the piece, here's where it's gonna go. And just look at it. If I square this up on here, we have a good bit of overhang there, there. And then actually I need to line that up right about here. Let's see how it looks over here. There we go. And then you have extra, actually way too much, but we can trim that down and 
So that's that piece, okay? I just have to make an identical one so it'll go on the other door. Then we'll trim that one off and we should be able to fit all this up. Um, this one and the other one, they're both pretty much, like I said, equals. We'll have to run a flange uh, tool on it to give it a little bit of a dip so that we can ideally fit it in under this present piece okay this one won't get modified any it just cleaned up some maybe but we want it to fit in behind it and then it'll use the sides here to set up on top of this shell and then we'll wrap it around now i want to establish a wrap point with the brake on this piece and if possible we probably have to do more hammer and dolly on the ends because the, the bend will be in the way but we'll see what we can do i might be able to get around it by cutting a little notch where you'll have an area hanging over here, but that won't be able to wrap, so we might be able to cut the notch out, and you might be able to wrap it both ways uh, with the brake, but we'll see. All right, so I got the piece here. I, you, you could tell actually here where the paint has been chipped off. I started to put that into the brake and bend it, but the center of the brake, I cannot get enough pressure on it, so it actually lays a little loose. Uh, the ends are good and so that was not working to get a nice sharp bend and I didn't want to go push on it any further and, and mess it up so what I've done here I've laid the piece on the panel as you can see I've squared it up to where you have enough overhang on both ends and in the bottom the apex of our bend is sitting right on top of the shell where it peaks up so we are pretty straight now one thing I do want to do is run a tape measure from this line to here and do the same thing down here and they should be the same if they're way off then we need to adjust that uh, so that when you get it on it's not going downhill or crooked or what have you so we're going to go from the peak like we did earlier and we got seven or i'm sorry 16 and three quarters and dead on 16 and three quarters so what i'd like to do take our hammer and dolly kit it's actually a harbor freight one it's called maddox and i've used it on a few things it works pretty good you get a couple different dollies this is a good one uh, right now i think i'll just use this and try to work these ends down first and just see what it's giving me because this is the smallest area first i don't want to start out here with something big and if it's not working then i've kind of ruined everything so at least on the ends you can kind of play with that a little bit and see what you, what you can get with it. So I have put relief cuts here on the apex because since they're in different directions, they're gonna to wanna to bend the same. So I did put a relief cut both ends. And so I'm gonna start working on this very flat one first. I might have to put one here since it curves a little bit and you have two different directions and it's gonna to wanna to fight you. So, oh, and another thing, I did cut the corners off because the corners won't be uh, necessary once you get both ends wrapped anyways we might even have to trim this off a little bit more so i'm gonna get my gloves and i'm gonna start working this one down and this one down. oh boy that would make for inspiring chatter on the radio all right so i had to stop myself on something and undo this bend and this bend okay we kept this one but what i had to do is if you look and a lot of people are all boy saw this coming but you see the door skin here that we're making and then the actual shell in relation to the actual original one back here you see it comes out a little further than the actual door shell okay so what i was looking at doing here by accident was forming this piece by rolling it off of the shell doing the same down here now if you think if you go to do that and you look at the whole piece this is going to be so wide with this one and this one's going to be narrower because it's wrapping directly around the shell so it would actually drop in about a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch right through here. So my remedy for that is to draw this back at least an eighth of an inch that way, reclamp it to the door shell, 
and to start wrapping this down again, okay? And I have this hanging out a little further, this plane, than here. So that way, when this wraps a little too tight, and I loosen these clamps up, and I can actually shift it, it should fall right close enough to the edge of this and the edge of this so it's not too wide and it's not too narrow. You dig? All right, now I trimmed this lip off. Like I said, it was a little too long and that's okay if it's too long, it's better than being too short. And we got like about a quarter inch that we want out of it. Sometimes it just plays that way. Maybe uh, the way you use measuring off one end, it just adjusts something else, but that's the way that goes. But we're lined up, we're sitting on top of the, the apex or the crown of the, the door shell. And in this particular instance, I'm gonna try to fold this back under with the hammer dolly. What I did do was I took the piece and I set it that way, just about a sixteenth, between a sixteenth and eighth of an eighth of an inch, somewhere in that ballpark. I also measured again, not that this is the final measurement, but to the crown of this, to the crown of that, and make sure they are, if anything, even. So right now, remember earlier we had sixteen and three quarters. Well, I've got sixteen and five eighths. And I've got a 16 and 5 eighths, crown to crown. That way when I can bend this over, get it where I want it, at least get it straight down, I can release these, it'll drop down a little bit and set how it was when it was new. Now one thing I had to do after I got pecking on this thing, you don't have much of an anvil type, you know, uh, situation here. It, it's not very heavy, it's not very strong, nothing like that. So I went ahead and removed it off of here. We did some measuring, our two inches from the apex to the edge was intact all the way down through here. And so then I decided to take it over to the vise. When I put it on the vise, I would just start in one corner here, I would clamp it, and of course we didn't have this sharpness, it's still rough, but it wasn't that sharp. And I would just do a check from the crown, and we had our two inches. Tighten it in there, and use that anvil section of it to knock it down, okay? jump out in the middle get our measurement do the same thing make sure that it was set right it wasn't doing this you know because then you're gonna have a real issue right here it's a little high so I can kind of show you doing it there and you're just dolling it down okay so all the way down through there that's what we did all right and it should be ready once we get all this rust, surface rust and all that kind of stuff cleaned out, then we can lay it back on there and finish it out by knocking it back around the lip. And now, a classic Indiana car commercial. No matter where you go in central Indiana, there's a Datsun dealer near you. Find the sporty 200SX in Lafayette, an economical Sentra in Shelbyville, a luxurious Maxima in Muncie, an affordable Pulsar in Bloomington, an awesome 300ZX in Indianapolis, the roomy Stanza in Columbus, or tough Nissan trucks in Terre Haute. Your central Indiana Datsun dealer is the man to see. See your central Indiana Datsun Okay, so one thing I had to do here was in order to clear the flange from the shell here and here, and also we went ahead and cut around where 
this is the very bottom of the slotted hole here okay so you can see cut that it's a little deeper than it would be on this side which is also cut this will allow it to slip underneath the existing panel push all the way up in there square it up a bit we need to knock this side down a little bit but we have where we want it and remember our measurement of 16 and three quarters well if there's any adjustability at all which there is come down just a hair let's try that a bit more and then you regain that position on the body to where it should line up with what's already on the fan so 16 and 3 quarters so what I can do in this situation let me flip this the other way clamp it just a soft clamp doesn't need to be super tight and do the same thing over here 16 and three quarters now this is going to be springy a little bit from the hammering we've been doing on it so i'll hold it down right there hold that clamp under Boom, right there. Now, what I gotta do, I'm gonna use a scribe this time. The piece that has slipped underneath there, it's tucked in there nicely. We're gonna do a scribe mark. Pull this out. You'll have a line down through there. Mostly just drug the paint off of it, but that's fine. We can run a piece of tape over over on this side of it so we can be sure and not lose it and we will just follow along that scribe which should be about where our cuts stopped pick it up try again right in there now if we slip it back in again Might even do it this way. Sure, scribe. One up there. There we go. So you can either do the scribe or the tape, to be honest. Always do a second check. 16 and 3 quarters. So we're good there still. three quarters bring that tape down a little bit and right there we pull this out we'll get our flanging tool and we can go all the way down through here and press it to where it drops down from this plane right here okay Okay, so you saw the flanger. Flanger did this. You could do this in most cases uh, with the paint. In some cases you might want to take the paint off first, then do it. But this worked fine. Have a little seam all the way down through there. And so when you slip it in under here, and this is going to naturally going to drop, droop down a little bit here. So you might have to put it down there and slip it up on there. Again, do your measurements across here like we did earlier. I want to repeat that again for you. It's a little redundant. And set it on there. And what we'll probably have to do in order to attach this and let it set, because I think I might do panel bond. I'm going to see if I have any left or any, any that's usable. But we could drill 
maybe a series of three to four holes. One starting here, here, and then two out here in the middle, evenly spaced. And that'll go through both this piece and this piece. If we put our glue on here and push it in there, it might not have enough pressure to hold them together and squeeze them tight. That's where the screws would come in and it would draw everything together. And then when everything sets up, like a day later, you could take the screws out and then just do your typical body work across here with either fiberglass fillers or plastic fillers, just depending on how uh, rich of a gap you get in all these places. I would suggest using the fiberglass either way. Okay, so here's the back side of the piece that we just formed. I'm letting it soak in some phosphoric acid. Since this used to be a roof skin, it actually had some glue kind of strung on it where they put like the uh, headliner insulation in. So we'll get all that off and get this a little bit deeper rust out. Let that soak maybe for a day or so, then we'll put it on. All right, now this is the other door. Here's the newest piece that we've made. It still needs some trimming. Take this slip down, it doesn't need to be that wide. And we'll have to do some trimming on the ends. But I did, went ahead and kind of took the flappy wheel and buffed it down. And we put a, a crimp the flange on it and made sure that that was nice and clean steel there in case we end up doing panel bond because you need steel, clean, clean steel on product and so on. Um, this one we're doing a little bit reverse of the first one, which we'd already had cut off, but we'd straight edge that one and we're kind of doing the same thing here. But since the piece is already made, I basically measured from the very edge here. And even though you're going over a bump, we went up about three and seven eighths right here. Okay. Well, just transfer that over and went just a hair this way so that it'll give you enough gap just in case there's any discrepancy then it won't overlap and you'll get kind of off on that so you go just a little bit because whatever gap you get between this seam and wherever you cut you're going to have to fill that in anyways with some kind of a filler um, or if you weld it you can just weld it in it just depends on what avenue you're going to take on that so we have a little bit of a, uh, a drop down here we'll have to kind of reestablish because the hinge won't go in unless you do but that's no big deal so i'm going to end up having to grind this off down here across here and up here and be careful in this area because this is the extra lip for the catch side all right we're getting ready to put one of our lower door skin pieces that we made on i went ahead and started on this one this was the very first door we worked on so This is the first piece we made, and I've, you can see here I've already got it wrapped around the door shell. A little bit of trimming and hammer and dolly, big time on this one. Just keep going down through here. But that's what we got on this one. I was wanting to feel it out for us before I got in here and showed you all so it'd be as smooth as I could possibly make it for you. And uh, came out pretty good. The black you see in there. Is some poor 15. I'm out of my Eastwood stuff and they actually had some poor 15 here locally, so I would have had sourced that. I put it on the door skin edge that the skin would fit up to, and I also put it on the inside of the door skin after I sanded it. I had went over a little bit with the, just a the flappy wheel just to rough it up, get some bare metal. I would have had to put these tacks on here just to level this panel with this because this was wanting to separate from that. This was wanting to dip. So this brought them together and I just put them every few inches, just little tack welds. And then also we wanted to make sure you get our 16 and three quarters from that crown to this crown. And same thing here so it's not drooping or going downhill or anything like that. Most of this, uh, I did not use a uh, panel bond. I will probably drill a couple uh, quarter inch holes about where I'm touching here and we'll I'll uh, press them together from the back side and we'll do some spot welds after we do that we'll clean all this up buff it down and then we'll use our fiberglass filler to fill this seam and then we'll start blocking it so that's how that's going to work
Be sure to visit the Hoosier Garage Store for original artwork t-shirts, hoodies, decals, and posters. And make sure you stay tuned for your chance to win and get your ride included in the collection. 